في أكبر Purchase Big Pass Sports Talk merch and support the family, man. And welcome to Big Pass Sports Talk. Thank you for your support. What's going on, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all platforms? Well, welcome to another episode of New York Giants Full Access with your boy, Big Pass Sports Talk. And today, we're going to be talking about the New York Giants training camp they had. They were in full pass today. And there were, there's a lot of things to talk about uh, during today's training camp. First and foremost, Malik Neighbors shows out again in New York Giants training camp today. He could not be stopped for the most part today. He was going against uh, Tay Banks, and he was routing up Tay Banks. He routed up Cordell Flott. He routed up Dane Belton. Didn't matter who he went against today, man. He was just absolutely outstanding today. Daniel Jones was delivering the ball, delivering the ball to him, and that combination is getting more de deadly by each training camp practice. Um, those two guys, man, they might be something special uh, this year if this offensive line can hold up and, and do what they're supposed to do and block for Daniel Jones and allow those guys like Hyatt. Wondell Robinson and Malik Neighbors to go out there and make plays, which they did today. Uh, Hyatt made a couple of grabs today, uh, definitely in, in, in the one-on-one -on -one against, uh, oh my goodness, um, number 30, he always kills me, Holmes. Um, made a good touchdown grab there. Wondell Robinson going against uh, one of the cornerbacks, one of our backup corners, made a deep pass from Drew Locke for a touchdown. I believe these guys are going to be pretty good, pretty doggone good going into uh, this season, and they're going to make a lot of plays for us. Hey, we had some, we had a couple of people show out today uh, that were uh, that are trying to make this team. And Chapman, he made some plays today. Uh, Allen Robinson, the veteran, he made uh, made a touchdown today. But Chapman is intriguing because he's actually getting pressure every time they put him in there. He's getting pressure. On, on the quarterback and Chapman right here from Louisiana where I am uh, he's making some plays out there and he's making his state making a claim to make this roster man and I hope he keeps going out there and making plays the way he's supposed to and he, he can actually make this roster man as a defensive tackle because we don't have that defensive tackle that gets pressure from the middle of the field beside Dexter Lawrence. And we're going to need somebody like that with the, all the attention Dexter Lawrence and Thibodeau and Brian Burns are going to get. Now, speaking of Mr. Brian Burns, he had a heck of a day. He was back there causing pressure, getting sacks, spinning off uh, guys like Light Skin Jermaine today. He was an absolute menace today. And he showed why he got that huge contract extension and why we traded for Mr. Brian Burns today. He's going to get this edge room looking great this year. So Brian Burns out there just making play after play after play after play, disrupting plays, getting sacks, making the quarterback have to move off his spot. There's a couple of times Daniel Jones would have absolutely been creamed uh, by Brian Burns if it wasn't for a practice and he had that red jersey on so Brian Burns man is as advertised Malik neighbors is as advertised the offensive line they did struggle and that's gonna be the next subject the offensive of line issues we have major issues going with the offensive of line so far in training camp but it's not issues that can't be fixed but we're gonna talk about it in the next segment but as far as the training camp practice goes um, 
full pads, we've looked good. Without pads, we look good. So that's that's the thing that I want to see. When they when they put on the pads, are people still flying around? Are people still going out there making plays? Are people still looking the same when the pads are put on? And it's showing that they are. When the pads are put on, people are looking the exact same. Now, Tyrone Tracy had some good plays today, and Eric Gray had a couple of good plays today. That running back room is definitely going to be a battle to get on this roster because Turbo Miller is making plays. Eric Gray is making plays. Tracy is making plays. We all know Singletary is the number one back. That's what he was brought here for. So that running back room is looking really good uh, during training camp. Now, as far as picking up the third and ones and getting those grimy yards, it showed his, little, uh, his ugly head today. We're going to have issues doing that, but everybody knows that we don't have that power back to you know, push the pile like PDOT says. So, it, I mean, it is what it is. But let's listen uh, to what PDOT has to say about training camp, and then we're going to get to the next subject. Today's highlights feature Drew Phillips making a terrific play down the left sideline on a pass intended for Malik Neighbors as he closed quickly and knocked the ball away. We also saw an interception over center field. Yeah, that's where safeties play. Pinnock coming up with a leaping grab on a ball that was intended for Neighbors. On the offensive side of the ball, Jalen Hyatt tiptoeing along the back side of the end zone made a grab a la Amani Toomer for a touchdown grab. And then also, we can't leave out Malik Neighbors. Down the left sideline, a pinpoint throw guarded tightly by Cordell Flott, but was able to haul in the pass a gorgeous strike from Daniel Jones. Those were your highlights. We'll be back again for Sunday's practice with some more from Giants training camp. All right, now. Let's get to the scariest subject about this New York Giants team. And it's been the scariest subject of this team for the past decade and even more. And that is the offensive line. Now, if you've seen the highlights and everything from training camp today, you notice that the offensive line had major issues blocking today from the inside and the outside. Jermaine Illuminor had very much trouble blocking Brian Burns today when it came to uh, on-field activities. Brian Burns could have creamed Daniel Jones more than once today. Chapman was getting pressure. Dexter Lawrence was getting pressure. Thibodeau was getting pressure. Um, I believe Ryder Anderson got in there for a couple of pressures today we had uh joshua zulu go down to an injury today jms is out with an injury evan neal is out with an injury it's looking more like the same as far as injury wise and as far as production wise just a little bit but these issues can be fixed somebody like kubas can actually show out who actually put nacho on both knees today pause when he was blocking him today very good blocking um, from Kubas today. But when uh, Izudu was in there and before the injury, he was not blocking well. Looks like Runyon had some issues today blocking. Jermaine Illuminor had a couple of issues today blocking. Now, did it get better when it was the one-on-ones? Yes. But actual game activity, you have to give the Giants defensive line a huge W today and the offensive line took a huge L now does this mean that we have to worry about oh the offensive line is not going to be able to block again this year oh the offensive line is just as bad as it has been for the past 10 to 11 to 12 years no this is just training camp but this is just practice but this is, is something that you have to look at very very closely because right now we have our veteran guard that we signed, Van uh, Rotten, playing in a different uh, position that we won't want him to. He's not playing the right guard. He's playing center right now until JMS comes back. And JMS has another shoulder injury. That's a little bit for concern. Jermaine Illuminor struggled against the speed 
of Brian Burns, which which allowed him to spin to the inside to get to uh, Daniel Jones before he rolled out and threw a touchdown strike to Hyatt. So are uh, we going to have to worry about Jermaine Illuminor with speed on the edge? We don't know. That's why these Lions practices next week are going to be so, so, so much important to see where this offensive line is because you're going against Aiden Hutchinson. They have two very good defensive tackles, and the other edge rusher they have is very good. So we're going to see where this offensive line is progressing going so far through this training camp. I, I, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait till some things have been uh, are pointed out. Some of the weaknesses are shown under a light, under a microscope, so we can work on those issues before we get to the preseason, especially before we get to the regular season. But the Giants' offensive line, they took a huge, huge, huge L today to the, the Giants' defensive line. And you are going against Thibodeau. You are going against Dexter Lawrence. You are going against... Uh, Brian Burns, Chapman, Anderson, uh, DJ Davison got another injury today. Hopefully, it's nothing serious. Um, and Nacho, you know, he said he's he's proud of those guys because he's not able to do some of the same moves that he did to them last year to get to the quarterback or get to people in the run game. So that's a that's that's a plus. But as far as the offensive line today, you have to give them a low grade and a huge L against this defensive line today with the pad zone. So we're going to have to get those issues fixed before we go into the regular season. And I'm definitely, definitely keeping a keen eye on this offensive line moving forward. But let's get to the next subject. And thank you guys for tuning in to New York Giants for access. All right, next subject right here on New York Giants Full Access. We're going to be talking about Mr. Mike Kafka, our offensive coordinator slash assistant head coach. Got the promotion this year, and a lot of people are asking, what the heck does Kafka do? Because Brian Dabo is actually calling the plays. I thought that's what an offensive coordinator is for, so what does he do? And a lot of people are asking that. So, what the people are asking for, Mike Kafka gave them, gave it to him. He did a little interview. We're going to listen to that interview. We're going to respond. So, let's get to it. We do a lot of studying. We do a lot, whether it's our own, our own plays and our own scheme and our own players or if it's other teams that are doing good stuff. So, you always want to have an open mind and a learning mentality. And so, that's my kind of approach. Mike, sometimes there's this feeling, and I've heard it from, from several people, where if an offensive coordinator isn't calling plays, what is an offensive coordinator doing? What is an off offensive coordinator doing? What are you doing on a practice day, even on an off day, if you're not the play caller? So um, during during the week, I'm, I'm helping Dave you know, put together the offense, talking about the scheme, talking about the players, talking about our roster and what that looks like on the offensive side of the football. At the practice field, I'm helping compliment the coaches and, and help coach and orchestrate how we're going to operate on offense as far as practice flow, um, organizing, you know, how we're going to uh, organizing drills and how we're going to do those things. So it's an, again, it's an open communication and it's things that sure it passes through me to Dave's and we talk about what Dave's with, how he wants to run it. And then we go back and, and execute. For him. How do you see uh, your role on Thursday night though of your game? You obviously not going to be five places. How, how, like, what were you, were you contributing, I guess, in that role? So that's, again, I'm going to let Dave's, I'll let Dave's hit on that, like the role specifically for game day. Um, but it's something we've already discussed. How, how does not calling plays help you develop as a coach? I mean, I, I think it's your approach. I'm going to take it as a, you know, learning, a learning approach, learn as much as I can from the people around me, um, and then contribute as, as best I can, whether I am calling plays or I'm not, like whatever that situation looks like, I'm going to do my best to help the team win. So that's what you hear from Mike Kafka as far as what is he doing now that he's not the primary play caller for the New York Giants. As you heard, he's still involved in the game plan. He's still very involved of getting uh, the plays orchestrated for the game plan for that particular week against that particular team. So basically what they're doing is allowing him to get head coaching experience with Brian Dabo because he is inspiring to be a head coach. Now, 
as far as you guys, do you believe what he's saying? Do you believe that he is all right as far as not being able to call plays? Can you can you believe that that was the plan and he was all right with it and nothing's, you know, there's no beef between him and Debo? Me personally, I think there is a little rift between him and Debo because I believe Debo showed him no confidence when it came to calling plays. And that could be a, a, a little bit of a slap in the face to Mike Kafka. So I'm not going to act like everything is peachy and roses between those two guys. As you can see, when Brian Debo is on the field, Kafka is nowhere near him because it's all Debo calling the plays. Now, like I said in the previous video, is that an issue for Brian Debo calling all the plays and still trying to be the head coach? We will see moving forward uh, during this season to see how much of a burden or how easy Brian Debo makes it look. So Mike Kafka, I do believe he's in a course to become a head coach. Or, hey, if the rift gets big enough, he will leave and make a lateral move to a, a office of coordinator somewhere else but i do believe he's still getting experience as far as play calling he's getting experience as far as being a head coach really because that's what head coaches do they get into the game plan every week and see exactly what they want for that particular week against that particular team and then they go out there and they execute it and mike kafka is definitely still in a in a in a role in that way so Shout out to Mike Kafka. Hopefully everything is right between him and the coaching staff. And we can have a good offense this year. Greatest show on turf, Big Blue Edition. Shout out to G Nation Lou. Let's get to the next uh, segment. All right. In the last segment of the day, we're going to be speaking about our best player, more than likely, Mr. Dexter Lawrence. Now, Dexter Lawrence, he's seen a lot of the faces of this franchise leave as far as Saquon Barkley. Uh, I believe he was here at Odell Beckham's last year. Uh, Daniel Jones is not the face of the franchise for obvious reasons, and it, and it won't allow him to be the face of the franchise. But it looks like Dexter Lawrence is going to be the face of this franchise. Uh, our franchise player and Saquon Barkley left. And he's going to speak on a couple of things about that. And then we're going to chime in and talk about Mr. Dexter Lawrence going into this 2024 season. I think that's my role on this team is to push everybody. Um, I don't want to be at the Pro Bowl by myself, you know. Um, that's kind of what I've been telling everybody. Like, I wear some of my stuff, right? I don't want, I say, I don't want to be there by myself type of thing. So I think the mindset for me is, just to push everybody, whatever. If I'm on the field, run, push them. Like, just work hard, and you know, it kind of uh, translates to everybody. So, as you heard, Mr. I Dexter, think that's my as you heard, Mr. Dexter Lawrence, he wants to push everybody on this team to be better. He has to be that guy, that leader on this team, because he absolutely is the face of the franchise. And he's going to have to take on that role, whether he likes it or not. He's actually probably the most popular player on this team right now since Saquon Barkley has left. And he's the most productive player on this team right now, even when Saquon Barkley was here. He's probably the best defensive tackle in the league right behind Chris Jones. If you want to consider Chris Jones that in, in, in the same role as Dexter Lawrence, and he's going to have to take control of this defense. And he's going to have to motivate people. Like he said, he doesn't want to be the only guy in the Pro Bowl, which he is. He doesn't want to be the only guy on the top 100 from the Giants, which he is because Saquon Barkley is no longer a Giant and Brian Burns was not a Giant. And I think he was ranked number 24, and I think it should have been higher. But, hey, he's on the New York Giants, so they're not going to give him the respect that he's due until we start winning, which I can understand. But Dexter Lawrence is going to have to be that absolute beast again this year. He's going to have to go get pressures against the quarterback. He's going to have to stuff the run. He's going to have to motivate people. He's going to have to go out there and lead by example. And is it fair to put all that pressure on him? No, it's not. But I know that he's a guy that has the character and he's able to do it. 
Now, will he be a vocal leader? I don't know. I don't know if that's in him. I believe he's more of a look at what I do and go out here and emulate what I do because I'm going out here and I'm going out here balls to the wall. I'm going out here giving them my all. I'm going out here sacking quarterbacks. I'm taking on double teams, triple teams. I'm stopping the run. I'm chasing people down the line of scrimmage. I'm chasing people from behind those screens. You know, I'm causing uh, issues with the offensive line. I'm getting tip passes. I'm causing fumbles. I'm causing the quarterback to get off his spot to where my edge rushes could go get sacks. Like Dexter Lawrence does a lot on that field that, I, that he does not get credit for. You know what I'm saying? It's not just about sacks with the defensive line. It's about creating pressures. It's about stopping the run. It's about getting the quarterback off his spot. It's about making the quarterback uncomfortable. It's about busting the whole scheme. And he's one of those players that does it consistently. And this team is going to have to take take on his lead and follow him, uh, follow by example. We're going to have to do that. He's going to have to show that. He's going to have to have another all-pro season. And I believe he can do it. So shout out to Dexter Lawrence, man. Always looking out for his teammates and looking like looking like he's stepping up to be a leader for this New York Giants team so far this this training camp. And he's going to have to do it because we need him. So that's my take on Dexter Lawrence going into this NFL 2004, 2024 season. So let's get to the next segment and we're going to end the show. All right, guys, man, it's been a pleasure doing this New York Giants for access episode for you guys. We talked about training camp. We talked about the offensive line issues. We talked about Mike Kafka. What is his role with the New York Giants now that he's not calling plays? We talked about Dexter Lawrence actually stepping up and not just being dominant, but stepping up and being that vocal leader for this New York Giants team going into 2024 because we're going to need him. We talk about a lot of things right here on New York Giants for access, and I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys for watching, and wait till the next episode. Probably gonna be Sunday when we have more training camp news and more training camp highlights and everything to go go through this uh, New York Giants for access. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that big blue join button, and talk your talk with Big Passports Talk, and join the Big Blue Crew. Shout out to the Big Blue Crew, and. Go cop you some merch. Go get you some merch from the Big Passport Shop. The New York Giants for Access line is in the building. We have 20% off. Some things are 50% off. Some things are 15% off. Just whatever your flavor is, we got it at the Big Passport Shop. So cop you some merch because I'm not going to tell you again. I'm just going to pull up on you. It is what it is. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching. And until the next episode of New York Giants Full Access right here on Big Pass Sports Talk, you know what it is, man. Peace. Hitting the mic, yes, spitting the facts, coming with full access. Big Pat in the house with giant tactics. Eli's handoff, rapping the classics. 90s beats, we blast this in New York. Big Blue. Where the G-Men roam, Super Bowls in the vault, that's the Empire's home. Red, white, and blue, where the legends have grown. Giants full access, this the zone, got the tone. Big, 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 big,